everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since my last Star Trek Sunday video, but I'm pleased to be back with my latest acquisition, which is another 12 inch action figure from Playmates, and it's an original series character, Uhura. Sadly, these figures are becoming increasingly hard to find on the secondary market, but I've been very fortunate in being able to snag one. So without further ado, let's take a look at the packaging. I have to say that whenever I take a look at one of these figures, I'm always immensely impressed by the packaging. A lot of effort and attention has gone into this. It's very thoughtful, it's very colourful, it's very bright, it's very presentable, and it's got an interesting shape and design as well. Which is pretty cool because it definitely gives this line its own identity and its own sort of feel, which is pretty fun. Now it's kind of shaped slanted, it's not a straight oblong, it's kind of slanted, it's kind of wide at the base and narrow at the top. Likewise, there's actually a number of different dimensions going on with this. It's not just a flat surface because where we see the Star Trek logo and the hint of the Enterprise there, that is actually on a slight diagonal, giving the box a slightly curved feel at the edge. The Star Trek logo and the insignia on the front fold there is also embossed, so it's slightly raised, giving this packaging quite a lot of texture already. Of course, we see that cutout there so we can see through the window display the figure in the packaging, which is pretty nice and quite presentable. And as I said, I really like the overall look and design. I love the star field, I love that we have different coloured clouds in space as well, there's some planetoids in the background, we have that wonderful image of the Enterprise which goes through to the interior of the inner in-tray as well which is really thoughtful, of course it's the correct Enterprise for this character and all of this just indicates the level of care and attention that's gone into the overall presentation of these figures. So I think this is absolutely tremendous, I really really like this. Likewise we can see that the design wraps all the way around the packaging, when we look at the side panel we can continue to see See the various stars and the star field there which looks really nicely done but again very colorful you can stack these up on your shelf because they are consistent across the line but I think that was also double as a little bit of a criticism because it would have been nice if we had something specific to this character there an image from the TV show or an image of the figure itself just to make it look a little bit more presentable a little bit more uh, individual for each figure or character on the shelf. Now, when we look at the back of the packaging, the first thing you're going to notice is just how incredibly text-heavy it is, because Playmates have taken an unusual approach to this design, where essentially they're trying to walk a tightrope between the adult collector and the child market. And it feels like this back of the packaging is definitely aimed at the adult collector. And what they decided to do here is give us a potted history of Star Trek with a couple of little images here and there uh, to break up the text. But this isn't particularly displayable and it's not that much fun either. Uh, but it is kind of interesting and quite a novel approach. And then finally, if we return to the front of the packaging, we can actually open that front sleeve because it is a gatefold cover and we can see the full window display. On the left hand side though, we have a little bit more text about the character, in this case it is Uhura, some more images there, and we have uh, that fantastic window display showing the figure in all her glory. Now I think this looks really, really nice. Again, there's an extra level of care and attention to detail here, which I think is really, really nice and it's very presentable. So I think this looks great and I think, you know, Playmates really push the boat out here. Now I have to say I was tremendously pleased to finally own this figure, not least of which because this figure represents one of the very few female characters produced in the 12 inch line. If I'm not mistaken I think the only other female character we got was actually Counselor Troy. And straight away that means we're going to have a very different body mold and a very different look to this figure to some of the others that we already have in our collections. And I have to say, I'm super impressed with the results. Let's start off by taking a look at this head sculpt and what is, frankly, an uncanny likeness of Nichelle Nichols. To my eyes, this is incredibly sharp and detailed and is very screen accurate. And we have to remember that this has been produced in the 1990s. At this time, action figure likenesses weren't usually this sharp, at least not in this scale. They're usually a little bit soft, but this is actually quite incredible and would stand up well today. I really love the attention to detail and the hair getting all the individual ringlets in there, the earrings and some of the paint apps around the eyes are really nicely done. Now if I was being critical I would say that it would have been nice if there would have been a little bit of an extra paint wash running through the hair to just give it a little bit more highlight, a little bit more depth or texture but that's a very minor criticism again for the time that wasn't typical anyway or to be expected. Um, the only other thing I would say is that given the age of this figure the head is made of a sort of soft rubbery plastic and it does tend to be a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky <laughs> all these years later. But other than that, uh, I'm super impressed with this. 
Likewise, I think the tailoring on the outfit is really nicely done. And of course, it is a brand new body sculpt, so it's a lot tighter fit in, and it seems to just flow quite nicely. The tailoring on this looks pretty screen accurate. Now, the material they've used is the same as they used on some of the male characters, uh, particularly Scotty I'm thinking of here, uh, where it tends to have a slightly cottony sort of felt feel to it. It's got quite a nice texture to it. It's quite fuzzy, uh, which is pleasing. I really like the attention to detail where they actually bothered to actually create a plastic piece for the insignia. So again, it gives it a little bit more depth and texture. It just looks more screen accurate and it just uh, has a nice feel and depth to it, which is pretty cool. They also sculpted brand new hands for this figure. Now with the male characters, they tend to have those very blocky, gripping, almost fist-like gripping hands, and they didn't really experiment too much with them. Whereas here, Uhura has a gripping hand and an open flat palm hand. And I think this looks really good. Again, just adds a little bit of distinctiveness to this collection, which is nicely done. Likewise, if we look at the legs and the boots, these are, of course, brand new sculpts as well. Now, the boots, they've adopted the same approaches as they did with the men. They've actually sculpted these into the base of the legs, so kind of all one piece, and then they've just very carefully painted uh, the, the colour difference in there. Uh, I actually think this works quite well. It's a shame that you can't remove these boots, but I actually think it gets around the problem that we see with some of the uh, Kenner or the Hasbro Star Wars figures, where they had these big, chunky rubber boots, which just threw the proportion of the figure all off. At least this all looks nice and neat and in proportion and I think it works pretty well. Articulation wise, these figures tend to be a little bit more limited. There is a straight swivel at the neck allowing the head to spin all the way around. There is a ball joint in the shoulder allowing that arm to kick up and out and you can spin the top of that ball joint as well to allow the arm to rotate around. There's a single joint at the elbow allowing the arm to bend to 90 degrees and then there is a straight swivel at the wrist there allowing the hand to rotate all the way around. Now, surprisingly, there is actually a ball joint in the waist, which does allow the figure to move from side to side. It can wobble left and right, and it can actually sort of bend forwards and backwards a little bit. Not a huge range of motion, but just enough. Now, there's more ball joints in the hips, so the legs will kick out to the side, they'll kick forwards, and they'll kick backwards. And then there is another single joint at the knee. In terms of accessories, there's nothing really bespoke or unique to the character of Uhura. It's pretty much the standard accessories that came with all of the original series characters, including the communicator, their tricorder, and a phaser. All of these accessories are very nicely sculpted. The tricorder in particular has a lot of detail on it. I like there's an extra sticker in there to give a little bit of an impression of what the uh, the readings actually look like, that interface. Uh, so this is a bit more colourful, but again, nicely sculpted and quite nicely painted. And whilst the tricorder looks a little bit out of proportion, maybe a little bit too large than what we see in the TV show, it still works quite well. Now this strap, if it's been left in the packaging for too long, like mine has clearly, um, then it has a tendency to warp and it's a bit moulded out of shape, so uh, those straps will pop out quite a bit. But you can persevere with this, it is made of a sort of soft rubbery kind of plastic, so it will mould eventually over time. And I have to say, the overall result is really good. I think this looks great. I like that she's able to hold her communicator uh, quite tightly in that grip. And this looks pretty good, I have to say. What doesn't work so well is the phaser, because the phaser is a little bit too big for that gripping hand. As you can see, it looks a little bit awkward and a little bit strange like this. Now, if you persevere and you're prepared to widen the grip of the hand, you can force it into place and she will hold it. But again, proportionally, this looks far too large for this character. And I'm not entirely sure that this was an appropriate accessory to give to Uhura. I don't really remember her ever holding or firing a phaser in the original series, and I might be wrong, but it's not an, it's not an accessory I associate with this character and no matter what you do with it it just looks slightly out of portion and slightly strange and ungainly in a grip and sadly if you do choose to widen the grip and force that phaser in there it does mean you're going to widen the grip so much that when it comes to holding the communicator that's going to be much looser and not fit as tightly but all things being equal, on reflection, I have to say, I'm super impressed with this figure. In fact, I go as far as to say it's some of the best work that Playmates produced in their 12-inch line. I think this is a fantastic likeness. I really appreciate all the nuance and individuality that this figure offers. Obviously, brand new sculpt. And I just think it looks really good and very, very effective. And it's a very welcome addition to this line. It adds a little bit more distinctiveness to it. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.